Feng, do you know what is game theory? I don't know. Okay, well, you know, it's the most important theory probably in your life. It impacts everything we do and impacts the, the animal kingdoms of biological life, even global economic geopolitical power. All right, you wanna know more? Yeah. Well, let me tell you. Hey Tom, it's the one and only Floyd Money Mayweather. First I want to say congratulations on your YouTube channel. Everybody needs to follow your YouTube channel. So what everyone needs to do is subscribe to Tom Payne. Great guy, great person. Tom, keep up the great work. So you know what happened with Gino Tong, right? So basically they copied our music, right? And we claimed them in YouTube. And they say, please, please don't, don't do that to us. We, we, we don't want to get a copyright strike. And, and because I'm nice, so I, don't, I, I let them go. I don't, I don't claim them. And then, but they, 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 they come back and claim us. So we did something nice for them, but then they stab us in the back. You know the story, right? So this made me wonder, why would people do that? Why would people do that, right? We're nice to people, we're always nice to people, but they still come back and stab you in the back. What's the incentive for doing that? And this has a lot to do with game theory. Now imagine, imagine you're in a dark forest, all right? Maybe there's several people in this dark forest and it's very dark, you cannot see anybody, but each one of us is carrying a gun, all right? You don't know who, who's out there. You don't know they're good or bad, nice or bad people, you don't know. And you hear something, you hear there's somebody over there, you have a gun. What should you do? Should you call out to them, say, hey, how are you? Or should you shoot them? What would you do? I mean, not make the sound and just shoot. Oh, you're gonna shoot them? Well, that's actually a logical course of action because you don't know what they will do. So you hear them, so you shoot them first to prevent they shoot you first. And in our lives, often we have this dilemma, right? And I think this is what happened with Gino Tong, right? We don't really know them. They don't really know us. We know they did something bad, but we forgive them. But unfortunately, they attack us in return. We don't know what kind of people they are. Now think about the last century, all right? You know, there is nuclear proliferation between the USSR and the United States. Both countries are building a lot of nuclear weapons. They built more and more and more. And their, their plan is that if there's a nuclear war, they will be the first one to destroy the other one. So that is the same kind of mentality. If I don't destroy them first, they will destroy us first. But luckily we did not get into a all out nuclear war and the humanity is destroyed because of it. We come to our senses in the 1980s and 1990s, both USSR and later the Russian Federation and the United States, they come to an agreement to reduce their nuclear arms and the world is a safer and better place as a result. So when do you choose to destroy your enemy and when do you choose to cooperate? That is the question. When we cooperate, everybody wins. But there are some situations like Gino Tong, you have to destroy them first, otherwise they will destroy you. What is the best strategy? And those are kind of decisions that we make every day to ensure our livelihood, to ensure our success. So imagine like you are a queen of a small country. Okay, you're the queen. And uh, you have neighboring countries. And maybe you speak different languages, different culture. And you don't really understand them and they don't really understand you. So in those type of situations, it may be sensible and logical to destroy them first. Because if you, let them thrive, maybe one day they'll be stronger than you and come destroy you. That's why there are so many conflict and wars in our history, because we don't understand them, they don't understand us. Let's just destroy them first before they can do that to us, right? And as your little kingdom expand, because you're the queen, your little kingdom expand and you have new neighbors. And again, you have the same problem. You don't really understand their language, you don't understand their culture, cannot really communicate. Maybe the logical course of action is to destroy them first. So maybe that part makes sense. If you're in a situation where you don't really understand the other party, 
like Yin Tong, then maybe you should not do what I did, which is forgive them. You should destroy them first. But if people can understand each other, they can mutually respect each other, and they can form some kind of peace, maybe a peace treaty, then both sides benefit because you don't have to fight each other, nobody has to die over it, right? And both sides can prosper. And that may be the better outcome than, than conflict. So again, the question is, when do you choose conflict? When do you choose cooperation? So in game theory, there is this problem called the prisoner's dilemma. And the dilemma is this. You have two criminals. Maybe you and me, we're criminals. We just robbed the bank, all right? And, but unfortunately, because we suck, the police caught us. But they don't have evidence because they're stupid police. And they need one of us to confess, to say, you did it, or you did it, right? The police put us in separate rooms. You're in room A, I'm in room B. The police try to get you to say that I did it. And the police try to get me to say, you did it. So if we are very good friends, and we cooperate, none of us say that each other did it, then we'll be free, right? But the police tell you, if you say it, then they will give you $100, probably more than that, all right? Maybe $100 million. Well, maybe that's too much, all right? But they will give you money. And the police say the same thing to me. The first person to say the other person did it will get a lot of money. Okay, maybe a hundred million dollars. Then now there's incentive for me to say you did it, right? And if we both continue to not say anything, then we just get away with the money that we robbed from the bank, but we don't get any more money. If I say you did it, then you go to prison. I get the money, vice versa. And if we both point to each other, then we all lose. You say I did it, I say you did it, then we both go to prison. So Ms. Fong, if we're in that situation, what would you do? That's way that's we protect each other. Yeah, so we, we cooperate, right? But so you don't want the hundred million dollars from the police? Yes. You don't want that? But I want. So I will point to you. So I get the hundred million dollars from the police and then you go to prison. So I win because you want to cooperate. But I want the money. I say, fuck you, and I take the money. It's good that you want to cooperate because you're like me, but I'm Gino Tong. Hello! I want to fuck you in the ass. So, not literally, I don't like ass, but you know what I mean. That's the prison's dilemma. So you can think of it like this. If we cooperate, both of us get three points, okay? If you cooperate, but I, attack you, then you get one point and I get five point. I'm the winner because I attack you and you, co you cooperate, you lose, right? Vice versa, if you attack me, I cooperate, I get one point, you get five point. And we both attack each other, both of us get only one point. We can use a, a point system to evaluate the benefit. If we cooperate, we get three point each. Right? If I attack you, I get the most benefit, I get five points. Right? If we both attack each other, then we both lose. We only get one point each. So let's play this game, okay? You think you're gonna cooperate or attack in your mind? Okay, me too. So now we say out together, okay? What, are you gonna cooperate or attack? Let's say together, one, two, three, attack. Cooperate. You get one point, I get five points. I win again because she is so gullible. She will cooperate, and I know she will cooperate, so I attack first, I get five points. Wanna play again? Okay. One, two, three, attack. I get another five point, and she get one point. What, where, when are you gonna learn? When are you gonna learn? Again. One, two, three, attack. Okay, now we both lose, right? Because she get one point, I get point, because we attack each other, right? All right, so let's do one more time. One, two, three, cooperate. cooperate. Excellent, now we cooperate because we attack each other, we both lose, now we learn how to cooperate. So now we both get three points. None of us got five points, but now we have three points. At least it's better than one. So what would you do in this situation if you're playing this game with a friend or somebody you don't know, 
like even if it's like a real business scenario you have a competitor you have an opportunity to cooperate or attack each other like what would you do so these are things to think about back in 1984 there is a scientist a political scientist his name is robert axelrod he is considered one of the experts in the subject of game theory and he was looking at this problem and he invited a lot of people computer programmers to write computer programs so the computer program will decide whether to cooperate or attack my computer program can based on your behavior for example and you are another computer program i can decide based on your behavior to decide whether to cooperate or attack so different computer programmers have different programs so for example uh, there's one computer program that will always cooperate like you did earlier right and that computer program did not do very well okay and there's another computer program that always attack no matter what the other person do always attack is because it's a very bad computer program it's evil like me so always attack right and then there are other computer programs that will cooperate first and always cooperate until the other person attack and then they will attack but not forever they will forgive the person if they cooperate again so you understand uh, there are multiple programs that have different algorithms. So based on the other person's behavior, they will choose to cooperate or attack. So they have these like hundreds of computer programs, each, each one with their own uh, algorithm, and they have these computer programs play this game 200 times. Okay, so they play 200 times, and then they figure out based on the point system, you know, a five point, three point, one point, which program was the best which program got the highest number of points? Can you guess which one got the highest number of points? The one to cover first, but after people attack, they will attack and forgive. You're absolutely right. Uh, so they have all these programs uh, ranked by score. The, the highest scoring program is the one that always cooperate first, and they only attack if the other party attack first but they also learn to forgive. So if they cooperate again, they will cooperate. Those kind of programs tend to have the highest scoring. In fact, they look at all the programs, the top half of the highest scoring programs are the ones that always cooperate first. And the bottom, the bottom half are the programs that always attack first. So this kind of tells you that in our world, there's a benefit to cooperate. There's a benefit to be good and there's a benefit to forgive. And there's also a benefit to exact revenge. If people do you wrong, you have to pay back. So the key finding of this experiment is that one, it's good to be nice. And two is when people attack you, you have to attack back, all right? You don't, you don't just let them like, shove it up your ass all the time. You gotta fight back. And three, you gotta learn how to forgive, right? And I think this lesson applies in life as well, in business as well, in friendship as well. We always wanna be nice, but we don't take shit and uh, learn to forgive. I think these are very successful strategies to have success in all aspects of our life. And Robert Axelrod actually did many, many other experiments, which I will not get into uh, here. But the principles of his findings are exactly this. And I think this is such a valuable lesson in life. So next time you have to make a choice whether to attack someone or cooperate, think about the game theory, think about the prisoner's dilemma and make the right choices, all right? Take some fucking action, learn about game theory because really it is the most important theory there is in life, okay? And don't be a fucktard.